tuning in to Pedro from the VHS Bootleggers back with a bit of a showcase, a bit of an off the cuff review. And today I'm going to be discussing the Flying Guillotine Part 2, which came out a number of weeks ago now on the 88 Films imprint. And uh, you can get those in HMV, Terracotta Distribution, uh, Amazon, you know, the usual shops and whatnot it's good to support the local guys if you can i always get mine actually from the local hmv i like to get them on when they're released i like to pick out the the, the one i want <laughs> to be honest with you i'm kind of old school like that but anyway yeah if you can support some of the um smaller distributors that's a, a, a great thing to do so they can, can can carry on now this is number 36 in the Shaw Brothers collection and unfortunately it's going to be the last one so if you are enjoying these do get on social media and, and sort of tell 88 Films look I'm into these because uh, they sort of put out a, a message on the social medias saying well what, what does everybody think we, this is going to this is the last one slated is there any interest so I suppose it's all about whether or not enough people are buying them uh, and that's it. it comes down to the brass tax of these things and they are let's be honest a niche product um but a, yeah, i'd say pretty big niche as well it's, it's, it, the people who like these things tend to go for a full set i have almost a full set uh, missing killer constable annoyingly um it's 40 odd quid on cx but never comes up um I've been told that it's not really worth 40 odd quid, so we'll see. If I can find it one day for under 30 quid, I will get it. Um, not too bothered about the spine cards. They're nice, nice addition. I'd rather have a spine card, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. I just want the, uh, I want the, the actual disc, effectively, and uh, the original packaging. I want the hard copy, let's say, because I'm not one of these guys who, subscribes to the notion of you'll own nothing and be happy but anyway i digress so human uh the human guillotine <laughs> i'm thinking of the human centipede here the uh, flying killer guillotine part two is a um the second in the series of the uh, flying guillotine films but there were two previous ones um between this one and the first uh, which is sort of not directly related, but this is more directly related, although it doesn't have the cast of the first film. I mean, one of them guys actually went missing from Hong Kong, and I'm not sure if he was ever seen again, to be honest with you. He just went missing. Wow. Was it the triads? Who knows? Uh, anyway, this one's directed a, a dual direction from um, Kang Cheng and Sh uh, Shan Hu, and... Um, it's starring Feng Q, <laughs> Chung Wang, Hung Wei, Lok Hu Lu, Nancy Yen, Mei Sheng Fan, and of course produced by the one and only Run Run Shaw, who lived till about 106. Unbelievable. Um, so yeah, this is a very, very enjoyable film. It, it's not directly related to the first. We've got a different um actor in as the emperor who's brilliant i must say he's he really lives up to his prestige and uh, expects only the the most pompous treatment you could ever believe from his subordinates and um i, I really enjoyed that it's almost comical because it's so over the top the amount of grace they have to give this guy, you know, uh, it's beyond just a, a curtsy and don't look the, the king, don't look the emperor directly in the eye, kind of thing. It's beyond all of that. It's, it's just, it's, it's amazing, phenomenal, really, for that alone. And uh, you see what the subordinates, you know, in the caste system back in China during this period, it was kind of the norm, and in some countries, it, it, it still is, I suppose. I'm not sure where, um, I wouldn't like to say, I wouldn't like to speculate, but still. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, really, really funny um, to see that kind of relationship between, and the class struggle as well. I mean, the, the, you, you could say perhaps this film is about class struggle. 
and overthrowing the evil dictator emperor who uh, has control over everybody and um, he is incredibly evil and extremely ruthless you know kills his own people for sport for amusement and to um, to test the the new <laughs> the new variants of the flying guillotine so this has been upgraded since the last one as a double guillotine and uh, of course the 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 weapon that was developed to stop it which is like an upside down umbrella <laughs> metal umbrella or a, i don't know maybe it's a light stand or something like this something fashioned by the props department i think it looks cool <laughs> to be honest with you so yeah the, the weapons wise this is this is up there man so if you just want to enjoy watching crazy weapons there's not much cooler than the fine guillotine i remember was it bring the ruckus by the wu-tang off the 36 chambers where the rizza says that the the um the human the flying the human i keep saying that the flying guillotine was it chops off your fucking head you're the woo is back boo 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 yeah i won't, I won't uh <laughs> I won't carry on with that. But you know that tune, Bring the Motherfucking Ruckus. And that's when I heard about the flying guillotine. And I watched it years ago. I was like, oh my God, that's absolutely freaking mental. You know, what a what a wicked contraption. Anyway, we've got some great um, performances here. I've got to say, Nancy Yen. I believe it is Nancy Yen. He's, he's fantastic as the female star. We've got a, a cast of... I mean, she tries to infiltrate the Emperor and his... Um, operation uh, and I'm not going to say whether or not that's successful or not <laughs> we're never quite sure I mean it's partly successful so here's a bit of a spoiler um, but because it's a typical Shaw Brothers film we, you know these things just end you know all right is that <laughs> like, like quite a few European films it's, it's open-ended to a degree but it's heroic nonetheless you know you can pretty much uh, judge for yourself what happens uh, it's relatively obvious I would suggest uh, but anyway yeah we've got a female troop of uh, flying guillotine experts warriors and there's a, a funny dynamic there between the guys and the girls and um, who's sort of uh, the the Emperor's um, f favourite, quite frankly. And uh, it's funny, it's like they've got the sort of Stockholm Syndrome, you know, the Chinese version of uh, uh, Stockholm Syndrome, where they're like, yeah, they, they want to uh, impress the Emperor. Um, but of course, there's uh, some sort of psychological uh, subterfuge going on here. And... Um, Really, you know, there's 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 a gang trying to infiltrate and um, free the people. Let's let's say and seek revenge. More importantly, it's always about revenge at the end of the day. Avengement and revenge. It's uh, it's sewn into the fabric of these movies, and that's probably why I like them so much. You know, we talk about revenge a hell of a lot on the VHS bootleggers. You know, in whatever guise it takes, that's because uh, it's one of them things. You know, it's um, you can have a certain understanding, and uh, I think it's it's in your DNA if you're a, a one of these people that believes in revenge or not. I better shut up there because it sounds like I'm kind of <laughs> sort of in incriminating myself. Yes, I believe in revenge. Uh, anyway. So yeah, we get the wonderful slipcover Kung Fu Bob artwork. We have the reversible cover. And yeah, it's, it's, it's excellent. I uh, really like the original artwork as well, so the Hong Kong artwork. This is 1978, I believe. So, you know, it's quite an old film now. The first one was 1975. You get the booklet. And it is a different kind of film, but if you like the first one, you're going to like this one. Um, there's probably more going on in terms of story and more characters in this one, to be honest with you. I, I'm, uh, you know, after a watch, I thought I did prefer the first one, but now I'm, when I'm thinking about it, I kind of like this one. So I'm not sure. I'll have to watch the uh, first one again. I'll probably I should do a, a review on that as well. And then, of course, you get the poster. These are great. If I had room to put them up, I would. 
I know there's other channels that put them up and uh, they look they look awesome man I've got to say nice quality print uh, 88 always do a really wonderful job and this is you know what is it 15 quid or something like that it's not expensive it's a fun thing to collect for great movie um, and now this isn't a criticism by the way it's unfortunate they don't load it with, with extras perhaps that costs too much money um, but it goes without saying that the print is always mega on these and um, the audio there's always a good selection you know you can have it in mandarin with the uh, english subtitles or you could have the original dub i always like watching the dubs first to be honest with you and there's always quite a lot of sibilance on that i would say but that, that, that's the original dub it's in mono you know um what would you do there perhaps put it through an analog system it might sound better in fact i might do that myself because let's be honest these bloody sound bars are they're not great, are they? They're not fit for purpose for an analog mono sound or whatever. I reckon it'd sound better coming out of like, one of the stereos or something. But anyway, I digress. Um, we also have a commentary track by Asian cinema experts, Mike Leader and Arn Venema. Um, so th these guys are, are on a lot of commentary tracks. Um, they've got a certain style, which is very uh you know they're very upbeat characters are uh, extremely knowledgeable um sometimes they, they, they go off on a tangent which do, isn't necessarily do, uh, focusing on the film they go, because because they're, they're, they've been immersed in the culture of hong kong and they know an awful lot about it and have worked within the film industry There's, there is a bit of uh, you know they refer to their own experiences especially might leader a lot which sometimes is really good and other times you can kind of lose sight of what's what what's happening on screen so it's a it's a it, they I, I really like them but when you only have one option perhaps i'd rather hear someone talking about exactly what's going on the screen the actors on the screen and they kind of jump all over the place uh, it's more like a bit of a party uh, but again it's a real welcome addition if there was if there was more to choose from all right that, and that isn't me to, uh, trying to slight these guys at all though. i mean they really do really know their stuff but sometimes i don't want to just hear facts and facts and facts i want more of an analysis of what's going on and uh, occasionally there's another guy that, that does these um, uh, the earlier ones um, and uh, it, the name eludes me and he goes into the, all the different camera shots and stuff and what kind of lenses and everything that, that that's kind of interesting as well so it'd be nice if 88 it's not their fault by the way but it'd be nice if 88 perhaps gave this out to other people and there was a few audio tracks i mean it hardly takes up any space so that's just um a, a bit of constructive uh, feedback perhaps you know uh, anyway, I've got to say, I really like the music in this film. It's uh, it's wonderful, and it reminds me a bit of oh, Godzilla or something, or one of the Gamera films, you know, like a, uh, a big monster film. Uh, it's just got this like trombone kind of thing going on, like these deep, these deep horns. So yeah, really, I just love it, man. And the, the action's fantastic. Wakuza fans are going to like it, Kung Fu fans are going to like it, it's kind of a hybrid of the two, then all the weaponry stuff, uh, not an overload of gore here, it's not like you're getting a Chang chair kind of flick where it's splat fest, that could have, if I'm being hypercritical, I'd have liked to have seen more blood, but I mean, going back to 1978 here, it is what it is, um, so, some of those effects don't stand up anymore, a lot of the action really does stand up, but some of them effects don't stand up, perhaps it's to do with the, the high visual quality as well and in fact um, if you look back at the trailer you can see you know the previous releases are uh, uh, scratchy to say the least so uh, it probably looked more realistic then um, so yeah I just highly recommend uh, the flying guillotine part two if you're into your kung fu films and I'll leave it there for now until next time to bloody pip and thanks for watching